everybody, let's paint this thing with Vallejo Surface Primer. Uh, this is actually a pretty good color for interior green, um, olive drab. I mean, I don't want to two coat this thing. I don't want to put two coats of paint on it. So I'm just going to use this brush and put this primer on and that'll be the finished coat. So when applying the paint, you kind of want to load up your brush with paint and you're going to want to wipe off the side. Uh, just because, you know, you don't want too much paint going on to the model. Um, it's going to take too long to dry and you're going to have some drips there. So you want to just delicately make your way around the model, um, making sure that you're applying the paint evenly. You kind of especially want to be careful with this too because all models have lots of ridges and edges and stuff and and let's be honest, we don't want big paint globs on our, on our model. We want to be pretty precise about what we're doing as to how we're applying the paint. So, you know, just be delicate and be patient if you're going to brush paint your model. Now, of course, you could always airbrush your model and it, it could go faster. Um, I just chose for the beginner series, let's just paint the inside of this thing, get it done in a day, and, and then we'll move on to the next step kind of thing. So um, if you wanted to airbrush it, you know, you could definitely do that. And um, we will be airbrushing in this video later on when we do the exterior of the airplane. But for now, I just wanted to quickly apply some green and get this thing assembled. Now, what ended up happening is I actually did assemble this whole cockpit in one day. Um, so I assembled it, I painted it, and I put it inside of the two main fuselage halves in one day. Um, and that's why Revel models are so great because you could do that with any Revel model. But now we're going to take this bigger brush and apply some white paint to the inside. Um, I just did some brief research on Stearman's and it showed that the inside of this thing was kind of like a creamy white color. So I just went ahead and did white and um, I just used a bigger brush for a bi bigger applicator to apply the paint. Um, and with any type of white, you're going to want to do two to three coats of light. Uh, light coats of paint on this thing because you don't want it globbed up too much like before. Now obviously again you could airbrush it and honestly probably do it in one coat with white uh, but I chose not to and also I didn't even prime the inside of this. It's really honestly not necessary. You're not going to be touching the outside or cleaning the outside. Um, you know most of it's not even going to be seen anyways. Uh, so it's, it's not necessary to prime the inside of it before you do this white. So I would just say, do it as quickly as you can. And um, in the end, you'll forget that you even painted it white. Uh, so I would just say quickly do it and, and get it over with so we can get to the cool part where we assemble the wings and, and fun stuff like that. So after you apply the main amount of paint, you just want to lay it off real quick and just make sure there's no globs of paint anywhere. So the next part you're gonna to wanna to do is just paint all the areas that need to be black, black. Um, and this isn't a very special part of model building, but there's a lot of black to be painted inside the cockpits of most models. So you're definitely gonna to wanna to do this step next just because it's the main majority part of the interior. Um, and also too, you wanna to give it time to dry so that you can do your finishes, washes, and um, silvering techniques so that you know it's dry for those next applications basically um, and there's really no rhyme or reason you can look up reference photos obviously um, to make your model exactly like the real thing I typically don't I just go around see what might look good black paint it black if I need to change it I can always change it later so this next step to finish your interior is, is I like to call it silvering but essentially it's you know it's weathering uh, so you're going to dip your brush in some silver paint and then you're going to actually uh, wipe it off on a paper towel. You can do it super dry so that you don't make any mistakes and silver it too much or just a little bit wet and apply it to your heavier areas where you want more silver first and then later you know, apply it to the areas that don't need as much silver because you're still wiping paint off onto the model. Um, now this is just a technique to give it pretty much a little bit of flavor. Um, make your model look a little bit worn in like it's been flown before. And it's a really simple way to, to really accent um, the, the details in the plastic, you know? So 
go around and, and do this around the model, maybe even a couple times, just to see what gets hit and what doesn't get hit. Um, it's, it's just a really good way to make your lot model look realistic. I like to use a couple different aluminum paints. Um, typically I just use latex aluminum, but um, I do have some really shiny silver. I like to put on some different types of parts too. So uh, if you wanted to be more detailed like that, use a couple different, uh, different types of silvers in certain areas. Um, that will definitely accent which areas are shinier and, and which areas are more aluminum, uh, kind of more like a flat shiny. Um, it just it gives it a little bit more of a, of a more detailed look at what's you know what's been chipping over the years. Now these are your seat belts. This is purely obvious. Like paint the seat belt. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but I am just going to leave this in here. I'm not going to edit this out. Um, I think this is a extremely important part to learn how to use a brush. Um, basically, your first step to how to use a brush and cut in lines like this is pick your brush wisely. This is obviously an old brush I'm using. It's not very good, but it's a trusty brush and I've used it a lot. Um, and I know that I can paint good seat belts with it, but it's not the best brush that I own. That's for sure. Uh, I also, these are not scale um, accurate seat belts. I did red because I'm making the Stearman my own. Uh, this is an this is going to be an aerobatic Stearman and I'm turning it into like a diorama type deal. So um, I wanted red seat belts, so I painted them red. And this is the joy of modeling because you can do things like that. You can do anything you want with your dreams and imagination for the airplane that you're building. So these two halves, the next step you're going to want to do is you're definitely going to want to check uh, how well these halves fit before you glue it in. And um, we're not going to glue it in today, but check your halves before you even put the cockpit in because that's the most important part is making sure that you don't have a lot of outside work to do once you get the cockpit in there. This is a handy tool. Uh, you can use a toothpick for this also, um, but I find these little dentist tools pretty sweet when it comes to scraping off stuff and, um, and doing some other things. So I like to scrape off some of the main access points where the cockpit is going to be glued into the fuselage. So um, I just like to make sure that there's no paint on the areas where they connect so that it just gets a better gluing. Um, now obviously this fits in there like a glove and uh, those holes have been pre-glued and I'm just going to use that tool to push that cockpit right inside there. Um, I really do find this tool handy when doing this. Once you get that in there, you're pretty much ready to go for the main assembly. So thank you guys so much for watching again, and let's get back to building.